I should like to invite your attention to the book of St. Luke, the 15th chapter, the 13th verse. And may I give you Philip's translation of this passage. Before very long, the younger son collected all his belongings and went off to a foreign land where he squandered his wealth in the wildest extravagance. Runaway child running wild. Runaway child running wild is the title of a popular song that was made popular by the temptations. Its words are a profound presentation of the problems of many of our youth today. We do not have to make any kind of apology or explanation for using these words from a Christian pulpit, now in a Christian service of worship, for they are a sermon within themselves. Harry Emerson Fosdick says that preaching is the preacher wrestling with the problem, or rather with the people, over problems of life and death. Yeah. Yeah. The problems of our youth today are certainly problems of life and death. And this song presents that problem mm -hmm. to a class of theological students at Garrett Theological Seminary in the system of Northwestern University in Evingston, Illinois. The late Dr. Ernest Fremont Tittle, who was said to be the greatest preacher in all Methodism, quoting and commenting on the words of Dr. Harry Emerson Fosdick, who is not only the greatest preacher in all baptism, before all though he is retired, was declared to be the greatest preacher of the last hundred years. Dr. Fosdick, as we know, was the pastor of Riverside Church in New York City, one of the richest churches financially in the world. Yet Dr. Fosdick did not take advantage of that fact. He could have received a salary of a million dollars a year or more if he would have accepted it. He could have had a chauffeur-driven Rolls Royce and other cars besides if he had accepted them, but he never owned an automobile in his life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was concerned about the problems of people. And commenting on Dr. Fosdick's definition of preaching, Dr. Ernest Fremont Tittle said to his large class of theological students, before you preach a sermon, first ask yourself the question, is this a matter of life and death? And if you don't find that it is a matter of life and death, don't preach it. The problems of our youth today is a matter of life and death. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
the matter of so-called youth delinquency Mm -hmm. is a matter of life and death. The matter of youth's rebellion is a matter of life and death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The matter of the teenage problem is a matter of life and death. The matter of students' revolts, protests, and etc. on college and university campuses is a matter of life and death. The departure of the prodigal son from his father's house was a matter of life and death. For when he returned, his father said, my son was lost and is found. Was dead, but now he is alive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus was preaching extraordinarily when he spoke the parable of the man who had two sons. All right. All right. And when we think of the prodigal son, yes. we think of a country home. Let me hear you now. A home nestled on the hillside and fanned by the evening breeze. A home out in the country where art is born and nature drinks from the fountain of the beautiful. A home where the sun is seen by day and the moon and the stars are seen by night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When we think of the prodigal son, we think of a country home where it is recognized and realized that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth forth his handiwork. A home where birds are seen and heard chirping on their songs. And are seen splitting the air with their wings. A home where trees are seen standing up and looking at God all day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And lifting their leafy arms to pray. Mm-hmm. A home where cows, with cows fattening in the stalls, cattle grazing upon the hillside, sheep in the meadow, help me here, chickens cackling around the barnyard, dogs barking around the house, and roosters crowing in the morning. This is the situation at the country home. And my brothers and my sisters, it was such a home that the prodigal son was born and lived. And it was from such a home that he gathered together all he had and took his journey into a far country. His father was a multimillionaire and had provided for the younger son and his elder brother Mm -hmm. before they were born. Yet he collected all his belongings and went off to a foreign land. Where he squandered his wealth Uh in the wildest extravagance. Mm -hmm. He said to his father, Uh give me the portion of good that falleth to me. And you know the cry of almost all youths Mm -hmm. is, give me. 
Most of them who come up in well-to-do are welfare circumstances. Uh Feel that the world, or at least their parents, owes them a living. Their philosophy is, what is yours is mine. I will take it. All parents owe their children the best start in life They can give them. Mm -hmm. We recognize that fact. But the parents should be careful not to make their children parasites without initiative and unable to struggle and strive toward maturity. For in almost cases, the children are going to face the problem of making it for themselves. Well, they themselves will one day become parents and be obligated to provide for their own children. They will be obligated to assume the responsibility of becoming citizens of their community, their state and nation, and citizens of the world. Wish I had some help here. However, the prodigal son had a sense of independence. He had a sense of venturesomeness. He wanted to go forth and see the world. We cannot criticize him for that. He wanted to take what he had and make it for himself. He wanted to experience life for himself. However, he made the mistake of not investing what he had in abundance, but squandering it in the wildest extravagance. Perhaps he was handicapped by the fact that he had not worked for what he had. Thus he did not know the value of it. He had never had to save for a rainy day. Having been used to plenty in his father's house, he did not have the foresight to save. Being ignorant and inexperienced as he was, he did not think before he acted. Anybody will make a regrettable mistake and suffer miserable consequences if he does not think before he acts. Well, Lord, help me tonight. The prodigal is to be commended for his sense of venturesomeness. He learned more by going away than he would have learned by staying at home. Although he learned it painfully and bitterly. He is to be commended for his sense of sharing. But he learned the lesson of the old song which says, Don't take everybody to be your friend. When he had spent everything, a famine arose in that country. And for when he had spent everything, he began to be in want. It seemed that some of the friends with whom he should have been able to share with. They forsook him in time of famine. 
However, the prodigal was not a beggar. He was not a parasite. He went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. The fact that the citizens sent him out to feed pigs indicates that he was not among his own kind of people, that his employer was not a Jew and did not know the ways and customs of Jews. Not only that, for Jews hated pigs, as most of us hate snakes. To them, a pig was as vile as the most abominable thing they knew. But the young man was courageous enough to feed the swine and to try to eat the food they ate. Jesus says that the young man was reflective to think of home. He was reflective enough to remember that his father had bread enough and enough to spare. He was wise enough to make a decision and say, I will arise and go home to my father. And after he willed to do so, he arose and went on back home. The prodigal was a runaway child, but he was wise enough to recollect the security of his father's house. And he willed and went back home. Thank God the prodigal was wise enough to remember his father. Oh, he was wise enough to go back home. He was wise enough to admit and confess that he had made a mistake, that he had sinned before God and before heaven. Whatever sin we commit is before God and against God and against heaven. The modern teenager does not think that he has wronged anybody. He thinks that all older people, including his parents, are fools and have sinned against him. In fact, he calls them squares. He does not know enough to know that all of life is for square. Uh, that it takes a square even to make a circle. When we think of a runaway child, we think of the young fools of every age. They always think that they have more sense than their elders. They always run away, not knowing where they're going without any sense of direction. They always hate the ones who love them. More than a generation ago, it was considered wise to be a school dropout. The dropouts laughed at those who continued in school. Oh, I wish I had some back here. The boys considered the boys who remained in school as sisters. The girls, the dropout girls, considered girls who stayed at home obeyed their parents and remained in school as greenhorns and stupid fools. 
Oh, they went out from home and got babies, yeah. often by married men, yeah. during their teenage years, yeah. and even sub-teenage years. Yeah. They were left alone to bear the burden of their ignorance and stupidity. While the evil men who beguiled them went on their tramping way. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had some help here. Not only that, but they had the stupid philosophy of what you don't know doesn't hurt. But I'd like to tell you this evening, my friends, that what hurts that that you don't know. And they found out that what you don't know does hurt. And I'd like to tell you it hurts very badly. Not only that, but it hurts the remaining of your days. They found out that ignorance is a curse. They found out that all of their mistakes are caused by ignorance, stupidity, and the refusal to hear somebody who knows either by experience, theory, or imagination. And uh, they called when they were too far away to be heard. When those whom they called were old and sick, mm -hmm, or even had died, they cried aloud. And the only answer was the echoes of a wailing cry. They tried in vain to reach the heights. They found themselves like falling angels seeking for light where darkness reigns and for life where death is king. More emphasis being placed on education, on training than ever before in the history of the world. Machines have taken the place of human hands. People are retiring at early ages because of automation and the computer. And if people do not have reservations of knowledge and beauty appreciation, I like to tell you they're like cows looking at last year's calf. You know, it is stupid to think that external things can suffice for internal qualities and intellectual and moral achievements. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to tell you before I close, therefore, runaway child, running wild, better go home. Oh, please, my help is here. Better go home where you belong. Uh -huh, and home. Mother is there. Why at home? Father! Somewhere waiting for you. At home. All the friends that you knew. They're waiting for your return. At home, the fatted calf is killed. Why at home, the 
Tell me there's a banquet at home. There's joy and merrymaking at home. There's a ring which signifies never ending love at home. You better go back home. At home, shoes represent sonship and not slavocracy. Why at home, all that the father has belongs to you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to tell the prodigal today Wherever you are, uh -huh. you better go home before it's too late. When the prodigal left home, good God help me here, to his father, give me. But you remember when he went back home, he cried out and said, make me. And you know, we all need to say, make me. We all need to say, have time on the way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. I sure wish I had some help. Uh -huh. I'm mold man and make man after thy will. While I'm waiting, yield and still. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Such man. Yes, oh, I wish I had to get there. Time it. Master today. Yes, oh, help me. Yes, Whiter than snow, Lord. Yes, Wash me just now. Yes, As in thy presence. Yes, humbly I bow. Yes, we all need to say. Have thine own way. Lord, have thine own way. Mm -hmm. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power! That's what we need. Power! All power. Surely in thine. Touch me, heal me, Savior, Savior divine, have thine own way, have thine own way, hold all my being, absolute sway, fill me with our spirit till all Good God, help me, till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. Lord, oh, good God, help me here. The old boy left home. He had his pockets full. Wearing good clothes, wearing good shoes. He had a ball until all of his money was gone. Oh. Spent all of his money. Oh, help me. Entertaining his friends. He went everywhere. Flashing his money, 
until his money was gone. Come on. I see him now yeah. in high cotton. Yeah. Same to the orchestra. Oh, yeah. Strike up another two. Yeah. Bartender! Yeah. The drinks on me. Gave all his money away. Yeah. <laughs> Till all his money was gone. Yeah. Oh Lord. I see him now. You don't hear me? I see him now when his money was gone. Friends had deserted him. No man gave unto him. I see him at the pawn shop trying to get some money. Oh Lord. He said to the Pond broker. I don't have any money and I'm hungry. But I've got some brand new shoes. I wonder will you give me some money for these shoes? He sat down and pulled off his shoes. Gave his shoes to the pond broker. You don't hear me? His clothes were made from the finest tailors. Good God help me here. Mm -hmm. But I heard him say, I'm hungry now. These good clothes have just got to go. Oh, Lord. Oh. Oh yeah, he's hungry, no place to stay, hey, I wish I had some help here, the old boy got ragged because he had to give up his clothes, he spent all of his money, oh Lord, he went home, Good God, down near the hog pen and got in his old clothes because he had to have some money. Mm -hmm. But I heard him say, no, I'm a long ways from home. Good God, help me here. I'm too proud to beg. I think I'll get me a job. He got him a job feeding the hogs. Oh Lord! Oh! I see him with the bucket going to the hog pen. Ragged, no shoes on his feet, no clothes on his body. <laughs> Got in the hog pen and began to feed the hog. He was so hungry. Good God help me here. Until he wanted some of the food that the hog were eating. Oh! Don't you see him in the hog pen feeding the hogs? Yep. <laughs> Good God help oh, me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Now I heard him say he would fain have filled his body with the husk that the swine did eat. For no man gave unto him. He was so hungry. He started to eat. Some of the pig's food. Yeah. And oh! Just before he ate some of the hog's food, he came to himself. And I heard him say, I will arrive! I will arrive! Go home 
to the Father. Yeah. <laughs> 